Several years ago, some of you may remember the movie Something About Mary. And I think probably that title says more about this day than anything else. There is something very special about Mary. When some of you know, I went to a Presbyterian college with the intent of being a Presbyterian minister. And I was in theology class one day, and the subject of Mary came up. And the instructor said, do you all know who Mary is? Or what the assumption of Mary is? And one of my classmates said, yes, the assumption of Mary is that the Catholic Church assumed that Mary was resurrected. <laughs> and we all chuckled, just like you did. But that's not what the assumption is. It's not somebody making an assumption. And in fact, Mary is a very powerful person. But let's back up. So what proof is there? You know, that's what we want, right, this assumption. Well, saints, for instance, the Saint Polycarp, who died in 155, was the disciple of John, John the disciple. And after Polycarp died, he was actually martyred. He was burned. His disciples took his bones and took them into, the, into a crypt area, and they continued to say their prayers with him present with them. And in fact, that's where we get the tradition of putting relics in our altar. In case you didn't know it, there's a relic of St. Bernadette in our altar. And typically, any church you go into, if it's named after a saint, there's a relic there. Why? Because at the very beginning of the church, we said our masses on the relics of the saints. And so we get that. Well, some people say, well, how could Mary have been resurrected, which she wasn't, but there's no story of her assumption in the Bible. Guess what? There's no story of Jesus' resurrection in the Bible. There's a story of empty tombs, right? Finding empty tombs with him not there, but there is no specific story telling of Jesus resurrecting from the dead. All we find are these apparitions and him being seen by other people and the experience people would have with angels. Mary's got three crypts. Did you know that? She's got the Dormition on one side of Jerusalem. She's got the Greek Orthodox crypt on the other side of Jerusalem. And there's a crypt that they recently discovered in Turkey near where her house was, where John spirited her away so she wouldn't be executed. She's not in any of them. <laughs> her tombs are all empty, too. So that's part of where the assumption comes from, is this belief of her tremendous power. But let's, let's go a little even farther than that. If Mary doesn't say yes, which we heard the story, part of it today, Jesus doesn't come into the world. The archangel Gabriel comes to her and says, this is what we want to do. And she says yes. It is that yes to Christ that brings him into the world. She's the one that pushes him into the first miracle changing the water into wine. We hear repeated stories about your mother's outside waiting for you. And we find her again at the foot of the cross. When all the other disciples except John have abandoned Christ, Mary's at the foot, still praying for her son. She is there from beginning to end. She is a powerful, great woman, and that's why we hold her in such high esteem. There's a funny little story about a man who died and went to heaven, and he didn't have a very good record. And he got to the pearly gates, and Peter's looking at the book and going, eh, I'll be right back. So he goes and talks to God. He goes, God, this guy's record, it doesn't look too good. God looks at it and says, yeah, you're right. Don't let him in. So Peter goes back and gives the guy the bad news. A few hours later, God's walking through heaven, and he sees this same guy skipping down the street. 
and he calls Peter in and he says, I thought we decided not to let this guy in. Peter goes, don't look at me. Your mom let him in through the kitchen door. That's Mary. Mary has a way of getting things done. So, at the end of today, as we finish this beautiful feast of the Assumption of Mary, we're reminded there certainly is something very special about Mary.